Hi, this is Pat Moran. We're live in Las Vegas, 6-5 on the road here in the Micron Experience Center. Dan, it is great to be back. Another year, another CES. And you know, last year was kind of like half in, half out, but I'm kind of feeling like we're all in. Every People are here. I mean, there was a line. It was probably 30 minutes long out here. And I think that's a decent measurement that says CES is back. I don't know. Oh, well, I was given the Jedi around the horn trick up the escalator and I passed it on to I you. I know. If you're trying to get somewhere around Las Vegas right now, give yourself ample time. This exactly. is not the 2022 CES with the barren, scary, empty ghost town halls. CES is back and, you know, while the macro might be, you know, worried about what the future holds for tech, if you, if you come here, you would never know that there's any concern. No, exactly right. And, and one element to technology that, quite frankly, is in every device on the show floor and every device is that being it being introduced uh, is basically storage and memory Absolutely. and uh, as you and i have researched this market over the past years and i was an ex-chip guy working with the uh, working with the memory folks uh, it's always there but i do get this feeling though that that storage and memory is is moving up the food chain in terms of uh, strategic capability and that brings us to introduce our guest, Dinesh. How are you? Good morning. How are you guys? Thank you very much for having me here. Yeah, absolutely. Maybe a great place to start. Uh, talk about what you do for uh, Micron. Okay. Well, I'm Dinesh Bahal. I've been at Micron about five years, and I handle our commercial and component businesses. To expand on that, commercial business is some of the things that you're seeing behind, behind you folks, which is the crucial line of products aimed at the consumer. Uh, we are also the go-to-market for Micron product, products in the commercial channel, and lastly, a component business. So that's what I handle at Micron. You made it sound like it wasn't a lot. That's a lot. <laughs> that's, a, that's a big job. I don't do a lot, but here's the 27 things I do. So absolutely, I love well, it's, it. it's great to have you here. You know, we've had the team from Micron on a number of our six five, and uh, always great conversations, great interviews, and like you said, the symbiotic relationship between compute and memory uh, only continues to become more critical. Yep. You know, we're here at the consumer show, so maybe the first question you know, we'll tee up for you will be consumer oriented, but kind of looking at the future of storage for high performance applications in the consumer space. What do you see? So when we look at the future of storage and memory within the consumer space, the first thing that we're seeing is applications hitting the wall. They're hitting the wall because of the, the kind of throughput that people are looking for, whether you're an advanced gamer, whether you're a professional doing CAD CAM, EDA kind of applications, whether you're some kind of content creator. The challenge that you're facing is that the totality of the system cannot keep up with what you're trying to do. Right? What we're trying to show here is how some of the new technologies that are coming up, be it uh, DDR5, be it Gen5 PCIe storage, be it direct storage, how the totality of those coming together is really going to solve the problem of applications hitting the wall. Yeah, and it's funny, uh, we sometimes look at this as a, a big surprise that you, you really are you know, the, 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 four, the four horsemen almost, which is kind of CPU, GPU, memory, and storage. And if, you don't, if those are not aligned by application set, uh, you are not going to be happy as, as an end user. And uh, we talked a little bit about uh, applications. Let's dig into uh, memory here, right? Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of talk about DDR5. If you look at what the processor folks came came out with and introduced on stage even last night and the day before, uh, a lot of this hinges on DDR5. And I'm curious, what is important to know about the difference between Gen 4 and Gen 5 DDR? So, DDR4 versus DDR5, two big differences. One is the speed, right? So you're going from a 3200 max in DDR4 to a starting speed of 4800, a starting speed of 4800 right. on DDR5, and then what we're demonstrating here is 5200 and speeds past that, right? So that's the first thing is the speed. Second is it's double the bandwidth of what's possible in DDR5 versus what was there in DDR4. So that's, that's a really, really big story when you go back to the content creator, when you go back to the gamer who are really looking for that microseconds, milliseconds of extreme performance improvement. 
Yeah, getting away from latency, even the smallest bit, right? We, we see now what people's expectations have become. You know, any, anything less than flawless is becoming not good enough, especially in these areas you're mentioning, content, gaming. So who would really benefit from DDR5? And talk a little bit about what some of the real world practical benefits are going to be, Dinesh. If you're a user using a typical office kind of suite, you're not going to see the kind of differences with DDR4, DDR5. If you're an electronic designer, if you're a gamer, any kind of content creator, anybody who is using those, even those huge spreadsheets, right? If you're not sitting there doing, just doing the email, that's yeah. the kind of person that is going to get the benefit of DDR5. Everything from the huge spreadsheet to that game to running that huge EDA model. Well, when I look at just the data density of content, even let's just take video, for right. instance. I mean, it used to be cool to shoot at 1080p, and that's actually most of what the content is captured at, sorry, is, is viewed at, but you want to capture at much higher resolution uh, to uh, zoom in, uh, to make uh, corrections, and I don't know about you, but I actually will go in and change my settings to 4K, uh, video video playback, uh, e even on video, and then for uh, animators, model makers, the size of these objects is absolutely uh, colossal. And uh, while some people think that all of this just happens in the cloud, the fact is, is you have to have this capability at the endpoint mm -hmm. uh, to be able to more quickly. Uh, pro first of all, you've captured it at the endpoint, so it's it's there. You don't have to upload it. But to get it done, um, you see order of magnitude differences in that. So that's what I am, I'm pretty uh, excited about. Um, let's talk about leadership here. So you represent not only Micron, but also, also Crucial. Um, I've seen some statements uh, that, you know, you're the leader on DDR5. And by the way, I, I may have written that as well <laughs> in some of my analysts right well, now. Now it's true. No, no, now, now <laughs> there we go. Uh, now we're here. But can you talk a little bit uh, about that leadership from a micron and a crucial perspective? Yeah, I'm actually going to go backwards a bit here. Um, you know, you, you spoke about the need for um, uh, uh, that, that huge video file playing 4K, playing 8K, et cetera, et cetera. And one of the things that we're demonstrating here is direct storage. Right? And historically, what's been going on is your CPU takes that data out of that SSD, regardless of how fast that SSD is, it's processing it, uh, decoding it, sending it to the GPU, right? Yeah. And exactly what you're talking about, i.e., I'm trying to play back this 8K, but I don't have enough power, I'm going to take it down to 4K and play it back, that's because we don't really have direct storage running today. Yeah. So direct storage, which came out first from uh, Microsoft and Windows 10, and now better versions available in, in Windows 11, really takes away that problem. So direct storage enables the data that's sitting on your SSD, sends it straight over to your GPU without having that CPU get involved. And the demonstration in the back actually shows the CPU utilization without direct storage at 100%. Right. With direct storage on, it's down to 1%. Oh my gosh. Right? Yeah. So you're getting this huge improvement in throughput, you're yeah. getting this huge improvement in performance, you're having that ability to play 8K instead of trying to downgrade it and play it back on your screen. Right? right. So there's, there's a huge, huge thing that's going on there. Um, and then you ask the question about leadership. So let's talk about leadership, right? So Micron's been a leader, A, from the time that we've been around in the US, more than 40 years, dedicated to one thing, one thing alone, and that's memory, yeah. right? Secondly, if you look at our recent announcements around, ju let's just talk about NAND, the 232 layer NAND. One of the things that we're demonstrating here is a Gen 5 SSD. Um, that is a prototype that uses our 232 layer NAND. So why does 232 layer matter? So we were the first ones in the industry to announce 232 layer NAND, and when we announced it, we said we would support 2.4 gigatransfers per second. In order for Gen 5 to go to speeds past the, the 10,000 uh, megabytes a second, it really needs 
2,000 gigatransfers a second, 2,200 or 2,400 gigatransfers a second. So we were the first ones in the industry to announce 232 layer, and we were the first ones in the industry to announce support for 2.4 gigatransfers a second. So that's what Micron's leadership is all about. Yeah, and, and you actually answered exactly, you know, I wanted to talk a little bit about the convergence of SSD and the NAND technology. It sounds like you've got a plan for that to, to hit the market sometime after CES. Mm -hmm. When are we going to see DDR5 uh, launched into the consumer market? DDR5 is shipping, right? We have products that we've been shipping for multiple months now. We're also going to be shipping the 5600 now, which is we were at 4800, we're demonstrating the 5200, and we're going to be shipping the 5600. That's great. Can you give us any sneak peek on what uh, Crucial might be doing in the space? These are all in the Crucial brand okay. of products. Okay, excellent, excellent. So, um, you know, I guess one of the things that Pat and I always like to kind of dig into are, you know, we see the opportunity, the leadership is clear. I mean, Pat wrote it, so it's true. It's, it's true, gotta, it's it has be, to be true. It's gotta be true, and Jeremy That's, said it was true too, and we had him on, so. There. <laughs> but, you know, one of the things we've seen in this industry is the challenges that coincide with being a leader. We've mm -hmm. seen uh, when you are the leader, you're always going to be vulnerable. There's always going to be up and comers, both global here and domestic startups, new, bigger companies overseas that are going to be trying to stake the claim, you know, next thing, the quote unquote quantum supremacy of, of memory, <laughs> Dinesh. How do you kind of, what are the challenges that you face in terms of staying ahead, staying in the lead in terms of both SSD and NAND memory technology? So when you think about leadership, uh, it comes across from multiple dimensions, right? First, you think about Micron's history. We're a company that's been dedicated to memory and memory alone. Micron's IP portfolio, more than 40,000 patents in our name. Our people, they're all dedicated to solving the technology issues around memory. And then the set of people who take that memory and are able to package it up into solutions and make those solutions work across the ecosystem, right? I spoke about our, our Gen 5 SSD, so that's not just our memory, it's our memory paired with a Fizon controller, working with an AMD chip, working with an Intel chip, right? So it's all about that ecosystem of solutions, and leadership to us means not just having the best memory, it means having the best solution that users can plug into their systems and have it work right outside the box. I, I think it's a miracle that it just works out of the box. Having, uh, I used to work at a chip maker for 11 years and uh, the work that goes into, um, it's amazing how it all converges at the same time. Mm -hmm. And that's you know kind of like the old adage of, of building the railroad while you're riding on it. Uh, it just magically uh, comes, comes together. And sure there's standards bodies, but you know, I, you and I have both been around the block enough to know that, that this is a, a an incredibly complex system, and the interrelation between CPU, uh, GPU, and memory is actually increasing. So, what I've seen is that Micron's foot forward in the industry uh, is growing as it should in terms of mapping out. Uh, a lot of these standards and, and maybe suggesting new ways, some novel ways to do things to give you the highest performance uh, with, the, with the highest levels of efficiency. Right, and it's not just about the highest performance from the point of view of memory, it's, the highest, it's about the highest performance in the user's system, yes. whether, that's a, whether that's a PC, whether that's a mobile device, whether it's a computer sitting at the other end of a cloud, right? It's all about making sure that the systemic solutions right. work to the best possible way. And it's so important that you say that um, kind of as we wrap up here because sometimes memory kind of gets commoditized. Uh -huh. And so a lot of these innovations that you're talking about are, are what's the, they are the differentiation factors that, of that symbiotic relationship. You know, sure you can have more cores, more right. thread, but if the memory and storage that's working side by side with those CPUs and GPUs isn't, you know, isn't aligned, Come together. those experiences, right? It becomes an experience thing, which I know you love. Well, this is the funny you know. little uh, industry secret where it seems like whoever can outspend each other on marketing is the one that, that gets it out there. But <laughs> there's a lot of, uh, I mean, I can't tell you the many use cases that if you would just invest in more and in better memory, 
uh, your application throughput, your responsive rate, I mean, it, it's orders of magnitude uh, uh, better. So we appreciate uh, uh, what you do, what you're bringing here. And here at uh, CES 2023, uh, it's about content creation, it's about gaming, it's about content viewing. Uh, some pretty fun stuff, right? Oh, uh, Dan and I cover uh, data center uh, related to uh, Micron mm -hmm. uh, as well, and this is, has a definitely has a different feel, feel. Uh, doesn't it, Dan? Absolutely. For all those uh, AAA gamers out there, this is going <laughs> to be exciting to them. So, Dinesh, thanks so much for joining us here on the 6.5 at CES 2023 in Las Vegas. Okay. Thanks, Dan. Thanks, Patrick. It was. Uh, Great having uh, talking to you guys. Thanks. Yeah. Okay. So hey everyone out there, for all of our coverage here at CES 2023, go ahead and click that subscribe button and check out the other videos that we have. For this episode of the 6.5 on the road, for Patrick and myself, super excited to have you, appreciate you. We'll see you all soon, bye bye now.